Okay. Well, here we are, unit five, pages not covered in class. Um, this won't be as long as unit three because we were able to cover more in unit five than we were in unit three. But yeah, here we are, unit five. So pages not covered in class. Let's begin. All right, so I'm going to read what A says. I'm going to re read it as we all have it in our books. Listen to the radio interview with sports store owner Sebastian Patel. In the text below, there are 12 mistakes. Listen and correct the mistakes. But when I was doing this, when I listened to it, I heard 13 mistakes. So the company was wrong. The company who made the, the company that made this book were meant to either have 12 or put in 13 mistakes, but wrote that there are 12. The, what I'm trying to say is that the company made a mistake here, and there should actually be 13 mistakes, as you can see here, where I'm showing you what those are. So all you have to do is listen and correct the 13 mistakes that you hear. Where you write the corrections, I'll leave that to you. As a matter of fact, if you need to grab something to write on, uh, I'll give you 10 seconds now, or you can just pause the video starting now. Okay, we're back. Uh, uh, you now have something that you're going to write on. It could be a note notebook or whatever you have. And we are ready to listen to the interview with Sebastian Patel. Let's go now. Welcome to our program, I Did It My Way. Our guest tonight is sports store owner, Sebastian Patel. Sebastian, welcome to the program. Thank you, it's good to be here. Sebastian, most people know you as a successful businessman, but you were a successful sportsman before that. Tell us how you started. Well, my father was a great runner. In 1976, he came from India to live in London, where he met my English mother. And that's where you were born, right? Yes, in 1980. We lived in a really poor district of London, and we didn't have much money. Running costs nothing. So my dad and I spent our free time running through the city's parks. When did you run your first race? Oh, that was at school. And everybody was surprised how fast I was. What happened then? My gym teacher coached me. And when was your first important competition? When I was 19. I ran in my first European competition. I ran 800 meters in 1 minute 50 seconds. Wow. And in the last five years, you have opened a chain of successful sports stores. Yes. And this year, Sebastian, you have given half a million pounds to build a sports club in the London district where you came from. Tell us why you did that. I want poor kids there to have the chance to do sports. It may be a way to a better future. Thank you for talking to us, Sebastian. Right, so if you were reading this and listening to him talking, you, you would also agree 13 mistakes. So all you had to do was write the corrections. That's it. So uh, for that, if you, need a, if you need time, pause the video now. OK, welcome back. Um, well, let's check the co corrections. So he was born in 1980. His mother is English. 
and they lived in a poor area of London. And he ran with his father or his dad. Okay, everybody was surprised at how fast he, he could run. And his gym teacher coached him. And when he was 19, he ran 800 meters in one minute, 50. In the last five years, he has opened a chain of successful sports stores. He has given half a million pounds to build a sports club in the district where he came from. Why? He wants kids there to have a chance to do sports because he feels that's the way to a better future. All right, so if you need to take a screenshot, go ahead and do that now. All right, so you've taken your screenshot and we're going to move on to the next one, which I believe are four questions about what we just heard. So we will listen to this again. Yep, fill in the blank spaces or complete the sentences based on the interview that we are going to listen to again. Welcome to our program, I Did It My Way. Our guest tonight is sports store owner, Sebastian Patel. Sebastian, welcome to the program. Thank you, it's good to be here. Sebastian, most people know you as a successful businessman, but you were a successful sportsman before that. Tell us how you started. Well, my father was a great runner. In 1976, he came from India to live in London, where he met my English mother. And that's where you were born, right? Yes, in 1980. We lived in a really poor district of London, and we didn't have much money. Running costs nothing, so my dad and I spent our free time running through the city's parks. When did you run your first race? Oh, that was at school, and everybody was surprised how fast I was. What happened then? My gym teacher coached me. And when was your first important competition? When I was 19. I ran in my first European competition. I ran 800 meters in one minute, 50 seconds. Wow. And in the last five years, you have opened a chain of successful sports stores. Yes. And this year, Sebastian, you have given half a million pounds to build a sports club in the London district where you came from. Tell us why you did that. I want poor kids there to have the chance to do sports. It may be a way to a better future. Thank you for talking to us, Sebastian. All right, so uh, pause the video for as long as you need now. All right, welcome back. Let's complete these sentences or let's check your answers. Okay, before he was a successful businessman, he was a successful sportsman. This is exactly what was said in the audio. In 1976, Sebastian's father came from India to live in London. Sebastian went running in his free time because it cost nothing. Five years ago, Sebastian opened his first sports store. All right. If you need to take a screenshot, please do that now. All right, let's move on to the next slide. We're going to listen to Peter Garcia describing his company. So this is a pre presentation, right? And he's just gonna talk about the company he owns. All you have to do is listen and fill in the blank spaces with the correct words. So here we go. 
Good morning. My name is Peter Garcia. Today, I'd like to tell you something about my company, Solar Light. It was founded in 2010 and is located in Manila. Solar Light produces high quality solar panels. Our main customers are solar energy companies in Asia. Solar Light has 45 employees in the office, the factory, and in sales. We have revenue of 5 million US dollars per year. That's all I want to tell you today. If you have any questions, please ask me. All right. So uh, pause the video for as long as you need now. Welcome back. Let's check your answer. So the presentation here that he is giving about his company, Solar Light. Well, that's it right there. I'd like to tell you something about my company, Solar Light. It was founded in 2010 and is located in Manila. Solar Light produces high quality solar panels. Our main customers are solar energy companies in Asia. Solar Light has 45 employees in the office the factory and in sales we have revenue of five million dollars per year that's all i want to tell you today if you have any questions please ask me okay so you need to take a screenshot now okay let's move on presentation this is uh okay and I've said this many times, your final exam will be as a group presenting your company. So this is something to look at. Yours will have to be a little bit longer than this. But these are like pre presentation skills in a sense. But I did make a video just on how to give a good pre presentation online. But anyways, let's get back to the book. We're going to listen one more time. Uh, all you have to do is write down, what does he say in the opening? And what does he say in the closing of his pre presentation? Here we go. Good morning. My name is Peter Garcia. Today, I'd like to tell you something about my company, Solar Light. It was founded in 2010 and is located in Manila. Solar Light produces high quality solar panels. Our main customers are solar energy companies in Asia. Solar Light has 45 employees in the office, the factory, and in sales. We have revenue of 5 million US dollars per year. That's all I want to tell you today. If you have any questions, please ask me. Okay, so he started his uh, pre presentation by telling you who he is and what what he's going to be talking to to us about. So here we go. Good morning. My name is Peter Garcia. Today, I'd like to tell you something about my company, Solar Light. Then at the end, he basically is saying, you know, that's it, I'm done. But you know, he, he said, that's all I want to tell you today. If you have any questions, please ask me. So he's letting it not be known that if you want to know more, feel free to ask him. All right, so here where you have right O for O, opening, right, C for closing. Things that people say, or things that you might say uh, when listening to or giving a pre -present presentation. So is it the opening part, O, or is it the closing part, C? You don't have to pause the video, but this is actually pretty easy. For example, I've come to the end. Okay, right there. We know the end. We know that that's 
it's over. So we know that's cl closing. My topic to today, I'm going to, uh, or today I'd like to tell you something about, or basically this is what I'm going to talk about. Opening. <clears throat> finally, we all know the word finally. As soon as you see that, you know it's closing. I'd like to begin, I'd like to start by my presentations will deal with it's the same thing. This is what we're this is what I'm going to talk about. And thank you for listening. It's the end, right? Closing. All right, now we're going to go all the way back to the first uh, page of the unit. This was a uh, the presentation from 1A. Uh, and you're just going to put a check by every connecting word that you hear. These, all of these are connecting words. The grammar for these would be called conjunctions. And that's something you might have to lo look up. But of course, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Right. So. Put a check by the connecting words or conjunctions that you hear in this. Now, this is something we already heard at the very start of the uh, unit 1A. Let's listen. Unit 5, track 19. Hello, everybody. I hope you're all enjoying your first week with us. I was asked to give you a short presentation about the company. First, I want to tell you something about our sales figures. Last year, we exported products worth 50 million US dollars to Asia compared with 48 million the year before last. That was really good, but the figures for this year are even better. We've exported goods worth 52 million US dollars to Asia so far. And we expect the final figure for this year to be the highest in the history of a company. That's the good news. However, while exports to Asia have increased, exports to Europe have decreased. Last year, exports to Europe rose compared with the year before. And in fact, we had the best figures ever. Unfortunately, there's been a financial crisis in Europe, and as a result, our exports there have fallen this year. Finally, let's look at North and South America. Two years ago, we opened up new markets in North America. Sales there were high in the first year, but last year exports there fell to 27 million US dollars. However, I'm happy to say that this year they have risen and already stand at 29 million US dollars. This year we have opened up new markets in South America, for example, in Brazil and Argentina, but so far we have no figures. In total, exports increased last year compared with the year before last, but this year they haven't risen. Compared with last year, they've stayed the same. Okay, so, yeah, what were the connecting words or conjunctions that we heard in this pre presentation oh, that went all the way back to the first part of the e unit? All right, pause the video for as long as you need. Okay, let's uh, check the answers. Here are the connecting words we heard. Let's begin. As a result, but first, finally, for example, however, that's it. Um, if you have anything di different, uh, uh, my advice would be to listen one more time or go to the back of the book and look at the script. Yeah, so if you need to take a screenshot of all this, uh, do that now. Okay, let's move on. 
Okay, so these are keywords here. So what you have to do is from pages 37 to 40, on the bottom of the page, you'll see something that looks like this. This little red arrow, if you want to call it that. Right, and you'll see words on the bottom of the page. Those words go here. So put in the correct word from the bottom of the page with an arrow like this. Right? As a matter of fact, just to make sure that you completely understand, we're going to, we're going to look at the bottom of the page 37. I have my book, that's what you're li listening to. All right, so on the bottom of the page, 37, you'll see something that looks like this, and you'll see the words achievement, figures, to increase, to rise, to decrease. And then 38, 39, and 40, we'll have words on the bottom of those pages with an arrow that looks something like this. Put the correct word in each sentence here. Uh, you're going to need time here. So of course, pause the video for as long as you need. Now. Okay, welcome back. Uh, you have unpaused the video uh, and you are ready to check your answers. So let's begin. It will be a great achievement if you pass your exams. I have never won a competition in my life. My office is not downtown, it is in the suburbs. The opposite of poor, and this is one where you may not have had to look, but let's see, is well wealthy. Now, most people would think, oh, the opposite of poor is rich. Wealthy means the same. Uh, which di district of Hong Kong do you live in? District. Unfortunately, the sales this year have decreased. Last year's sales, oh, figures were better than this year. So last year's sales figures were better than this year's. Holiday Inn is an international hotel chain. Okay. You know what I'm going to say? If you need to take a screenshot, go ahead and do that now. All right, let's move on to the next slide. All right, so we have a reading here. This is page 43. Okay, so you're going to skim quickly, quickly look and find out what sort of business these two successful pe people run. What business does he run? What business does she run? So again, skim just means quickly looking. So you're not going to read it all. You're just going to quickly look. All right, pause the video for as long as you need now. All right, let's check again. So you did not completely read the whole thing. You just quickly looked to see what type of businesses each of them have. So he runs Zozo Town, an online shopping mall. Excuse me. And she, she is the CEO of Han Corporation, a company that produces steam cleaners for cleaning floors and clothes steamers for ironing clothes. Okay, so the, uh, th that's the type of company he owns. It's an online shop shopping mall, and she owns, I guess, a steam cleaning 
for both floor and clothes. All right, so if you need to take a screenshot, go ahead and do that now. All right, let's move on. Okay, now, of course, it says here before, it, here it's, it still says before you read, but now you're going to read. Okay, uh, what I'm going to do here, usually I would read along, but I'm not going to, just to save time. So what I want you guys to do is pause the video and one, you can read here on screen, or two, you can just read in your book, whichever is easier for you. But please pause the video for as long as you need now. All right, so welcome back. Uh, you have read this and you have probably looked at the questions, but right now I said the only thing you had to do was read. That's it. So let's move on. All right, so if you need to look one more time, uh, basically you're looking for these numbers for years, 1999. 2004, 2011, the mid 1990s. Again, uh, looking at these years, you need to write down what ha happened in those years. Uh, if you need to pause the video, please pause now. All right. Welcome back. Uh, you, you have written down why each of these years is important to either Yasaku Maezawa or Han Gyeong Hee. Uh, let's find out. So in 1999, Han Gyeong Hee got a bank loan. So she went to the bank, asked for or uh, money, and she got one. In 2004, uh, Yasuka was, okay, he had the idea of the online shopping mall or the fashion mall Zozo Town was born. Again, forward slash means or. All right, 2011, what happened? In 2011, there was an earthquake and tsunami, or Yasuku sold special t-shirts in his online store and raised money for the Japanese Red Cross. You could, you could have, or you could still do it. There was an earthquake and tsunami, so Yasaku sold t-shirts in his online store and raised to raise money for the Japanese Red Cross. You could make, make this or into one sentence. And what happened in the mid 1990s? Uh, in the mid 1990s, Yasaku started to sell CDs and t-shirts online. All right, so if you need to take a screenshot, go ahead and do that now. Okay. Welcome back. We are moving on to the next slide. Okay, so you will have to go back to the reading before you can answer these seven, well, actually, answer no. Write in the missing uh, phrases here, or you need to complete the sentences. You'll have to go back and look, look at the re reading. So pause the video for as long as you need now. Okay, welcome back. Um, let's check your answers. Before you, he went into business, Yosaku Mazara was a member of a Japanese punk band. There you go. Uh, he started to sell CDs because he wanted to share his favorite music with everyone. 
since 2004, Zozo Town sales have increased 20% a year. Not bad. All right. He sold special t-shirts in his online store to raise money for the Japanese Red Cross. A clean floor is very important in Korea because Koreans spend a lot of time on the floor. Hung Gyung Hee didn't want to clean floors on her hands and knees, so she invented a steam cleaner. Han Corporation is a multinational, multi million dollar company. All right, if you need to take a screenshot, go ahead and do that now. Okay, welcome back. You've taken your screenshot. Let's move on to the next slide. Uh, we're getting to the end here. The, uh, this culture focus with the hands. This is the last thing we're going to be doing. Now, there's a few pa pages of this. I'm just saying, uh, after we answer the questions about all of these, we will then be done. So look at the hand signals that are often used in the US and UK. Match pictures A to H with the correct expressions one to eight. Yes, I'm reading. So basically for each one, what are they saying? Without saying it, what are they saying? Here you go. So we already know that uh, for number one, just stop right there. We know that's F. Okay, that's the company. Uh, okay, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. That's the listening. Uh, just stop right there. We know that's D. When you have the handout like like that. All right, as far I'm sorry about I was reading B when I should have been lo looking at the blue box. All right, so for the rest, match them. Uh, of course, pause the video for as long as you need now. Okay, welcome back. Hand signals, here we go. Just stop right there, D. All right, I have no idea. Mulayo, E. Hope everything goes well. A, fingers crossed. Right. Call me. Call me later. H. Great job. Well done. Thumbs up, right? That's a bad idea. Not a good idea. F. You must be crazy. C. Sorry. I can't hear you. Yeah, we do that a lot in Zoom, right? All right. So. Sorry, can't hear you. That's G. Okay, so it's D E A H D -E F C G. Now I was getting ahead of myself. Here we are. Now you're going to listen to the speakers one to eight. Which hand signal are they giving while they speak? So, what do you think they're, what hand signals do you think they're giving when they speak? One, forget it, that won't work. Two, I wish you the best of luck with your exams. Three, that's enough. Now go away and leave me alone. Four, if you want to talk, I'll be home this evening. Five, you passed your exams, great. Six, you want to do what? That's such a crazy idea. Seven, could you speak a little louder, please? Eight. I'm sorry. I can't tell you who the president of Brazil is. All right. So normally I would say pause the video for as long as you need, but I'm going to play it one more time just to help you out. Track 22. One. Forget it. That won't work. Two. I wish you the best of luck with your exams. Three, 
That's enough. Now go away and leave me alone. Four. If you want to talk, I'll be home this evening. Five. You passed your exams. Great. Six. You want to do what? That's such a crazy idea. Seven. Could you speak a little louder, please? Eight. I'm sorry. I can't tell you who the president of Brazil is. All right, now you can pause the video for as long as you need. Okay, uh, welcome back. We are going to check the answers. All right, so for number two, it's A, best of luck, right? Fingers crossed. Three, D, stop, you know, please go away. Basically, stop, go away. Uh, four, H, I'll be home tonight. You can call me. Five, B, you passed your test. That was great. Uh, six. C, that's a crazy idea. You know, you want to do what? All right, seven. G, can you speak a little louder? I can't hear you. And eight, I don't, I don't know. Who, who is it? Who is the president? All right. So here are your answers, F-A-D-H-B-C-G-E. All right, if you need to take a screenshot, go ahead and do that now. All right, you've taken your screenshot, let's move on. All right, and which hand signals can you use for each of these situations? So here you're just reading and putting in which hand signal you think would be would would be used. So go ahead and pause the video for as long as you need. Now. Okay, welcome back. Uh, we're checking, or we're going to check your answers to which hand signals for which situation. So a colleague asks you for some information, but you cannot help. E, you, you don't know. You're at a very noisy party and somebody is trying to tell you something. G, a friend of yours is going on a job interview. Fingers crossed. All right, somebody, want, somebody wants to have an argument with you, but you do not want to argue. D. Your colleague has written an excellent report. B, uh, you want to keep in touch with, with somebody. H, a friend asks you about a movie you have seen. It was, you thought it was very bad. A friend thinks you should invest all your money in his new business. Oh, no, that's crazy. All right. Pause the video. Uh, pause, yeah, pause the video. I'm sorry. No. Take a screenshot if you need to now. All right, you've taken your screenshot. Thanks for watching. That's it. Uh, the, as I always say at the end of these vi uh, videos, Depending when you are watching this, uh, I'll, I'll see you in Zoom class or don't forget to watch the video for class one. And that's it.